Hello and welcome to today's exciting episode. Well, I was hoping it was going to be a Vogue um, coat, but I'm still making it, unfortunately. So this is a sewing vlog of all the projects I've been juggling for the past couple of weeks and a glimpse of the next few things it's I'm perfect. making. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. February 2023 sewing vlog. Let's do this. So I just finished the um, what's happening this month video and yes this is all the stuff that I got out for that so then I had to put it away. That's where I ended the last sewing vlog and um, yeah so the next thing I had to do was take out the patterns that I chose. These are the patterns for this month actually. I think a couple of them will be for next month as well because it is overly ambitious to do this many things in one month. But um, yeah, so I've got the envelope with the illustration, then I've got the instructions, then I've got the original pattern, and then I've got all the pieces that I've traced. So I only trace the pieces that I need for each one, but say, for example, with this one, I'm going to make a duster jacket version and then I'm going to make a dress version. So, um, yeah, the dress version, you're supposed to make it with a zip so it's slightly tighter at the top, but I'm doing a sort of baggier version, pullover jumper version. So I've got a couple of different versions of some of them. So this is the pullover version of the 1960s vintage jumper, dra um, jumper dress. And, uh, yeah, I put sleeves on it because I had this tiny awkward shapes of fabric left and um, yeah they were just big enough for these little puffy sleeves and I don't normally like v-necks but if you put puffy sleeves on a v-neck it kind of looks like a heart so I absolutely love that. I think I still like the plain ruby dress better you know with the sort of higher neck circle neckline but um, oh, and this behind there, that's the rose one. That's the jumper dress. It's a pullover version of the vintage jumper dress that doesn't have sleeves, so it's a true jumper dress. But yeah, I I love this one so much. I'm just because it's a circle skirt. I'm letting it drop for a few days or a week, whatever, before I put the patch pockets on and hem it. When I was tracing out the patterns for February. I found it kind of meditative. So I've for a long time I've been meaning to find another jacket pattern for um, the fabric flower jackets that um, you stitch on all the artificial flowers, but you need a really simple jacket to do that. And um, yeah, so and also this pink one. I've got a few plain tweeds that I want to make up as sort of suit jackets. And yeah, Tom Brown is a New York designer and he does these gorgeous, really cropped, really fitted suit type jackets. And I normally stay away from jackets with lapels and collars because you can't really bead all of that. And under that, it's too complex. But I do like the Tom Brown jacket. So um, and I do have a few sort of tweeds that would suit that particular style. So yeah, I'm tracing out these and some of them don't have lining. So I'm just drafting my own lining pieces. And yeah, I think each month I'll try a new jacket pattern. I mean, I love of the Chanel style ones that I have but yeah I think I might do that. Ugh, I finally got around to making the um, Simplicity 9449 um, vintage jumper dress the one with the zip the fitted one I don't like it <laughs> I've made two Cinderella's and one ugly sister it's just I just prefer my version of the pattern so much more. I mean, look at the rose one with the, and then this one. It, I mean, the my fabric choice didn't help, but oh, and this is the pink polka dot one with the, um, a shirt underneath it. It is just delightful. Whereas this one is kind of just boring. I mean, if I put the so the rose one has the 1950s net petticoat underneath it. So if I put that under the boring one, then it would look less ugly. Well, it doesn't look ugly. It just isn't as fabulous as the other two. It's it's more understated. But um, yeah, it's also really fitted. And I wanted jumper dresses that I can wear like long sleeve t-shirts or even maybe a hoodie underneath without you know, it 
getting too snug around your midriff. So yeah, I really do prefer the two that I made. I might make a plain one in the pullover, so this, but in a plain fabric. I think I'd really like that and it'd be more wintry. I think these ones are aggressively bright. Oh, this is the thumbnail for it. Isn't that cute? And um, yeah, but I love the rose one and the polka dot one are just so adorable that, yeah, but I don't like the v-neck. So I think the next one I make will just be, it'll be more of a scoop round neck rather than like all my other ruby dresses are quite high round necks. So I think I'll make it a scoop and that way you'll still be able to see the shirt underneath, but it won't be a v-neck. So yeah. I think that's what I do. But yeah, as I said, I'm super happy with the two, the rose one and the polka dot one. And the other one, it's okay, but it's just, compared to the other two, it's a little bit mediocre. I have cut out those massive patch pockets and I will stick them on, but I'm just going to let the skirts drop because they're cut, circle skirts cut on the bias. So I'm just going to let them drop for a couple of days or I think I'll leave it till the weekend and then I'll hand stitch the pockets on. So then after I did that section of this video, I took the um, 1950s petticoat out from under the rose one and put it on the um, wine colored one and it's so cute it's absolutely adorable so I like it now I'm pretty fickle but um yeah I do like the colorful ones like the green tie on the the Sally Kelly print tie on the rose one just looks so fabulous and I'm gonna wear like a bright long sleeve t-shirt under it or something like that next project was um i haven't used this pattern before it's butterick b6328 so i made a wearable mock-up out of a sort of a denim weight um cotton canvas and look who made a cameo in this video it's the wine colored vintage jumper dress and with the 1950s petticoat underneath but the reason i had it is because i wanted to show the difference between these three jackets the one on the right is a slim fit ultra um fitted Karl Lagerfeld era Chanel style jacket and that's based on the Vogue 7975. The one on the left is a discontinued McCall's one and that's more like the vintage Chanel and so is this Butterick one here in the that I've just done a mock-up of. It's also um, a vintage Chanel style so with that baggier cardigan style. So yeah, I'm really happy with it and I think it's going to make a good base for a floral jacket. So I might make a couple more of these up in just plain black so I can stitch flowers on there. If I use it to make a tweed jacket, I'll probably make it a scooch longer, just a little bit longer than that because it is quite cropped. When making that jacket made me think about the um, floral jackets. There's one in the um, title sequence. And um, yeah, so I got out the red and pink flowers. I absolutely love these as dahlias and they are so huge. And there's a hot pink geraniums. There's some tropical leaves there, begonia leaves and um, some roses and such a good mix. And this is going to be a red and pink jacket. It's kind of inspired by this um, Dolce Gabbana one, sort of, but not really. And there's going to be some blue bead clusters in there as well but um yeah I don't really have time to make it this month so I carefully packed them all away again in their bag maybe I'll make it next month it does have a lot of greenery in it next month is green so yeah maybe I'll do that and then I did some posts on Instagram so I've got three different accounts one is just mainly black and white one is just full-on colorful and this was on the colorful one it's kind of going through a red cycle and the green ones are for my perfect jacket oh that bag is Jean-Paul Gaultier and there was a banana leaf clutch as well that was such a good collection quite a few years ago now Anyway, this is the greens from the Perfect Jacket account. So yeah, it takes ages to post on social media. But then it was time to do another dress. So I'm doing the pullover one. And I'm not sure about the skirt shape of this dress, but I cut everything out. And um, yeah, as I said, I wasn't really sure about the shape of the skirt. 
so I sort of made sure I had uh, enough for everything. So I cut everything else out first and there was a little bit of fabric left. So as you can see, there's a, uh, a few inches at the bottom there. So what I did was I made it longer and I also didn't make the bottom go back in. I just sort of kept it right to the edge of the bit of fabric, totally maximize, maximize the use of fabric. So yeah, I wasn't sure whether it was going to work or not with um, sort of deviating from the, the pattern that way. So I didn't feel myself making it. I just sort of quickly made it up. And yeah, I think I like it. I used some pink Halloween fabric. It's pink with um, black Halloween, like witches' hats and spiders and things on it. So yeah, I I like it. I think maybe I like it just because I like pink and green together. So the skirt is a bit weird, but um, I mean it's easy to walk in. It's comfortable. It's quick to make. So yeah, I think I like it. I probably. I feel like I need to make another one just to check. I mean, I really love the circle skirt and I love the ruby dress, the ruby dresses with the big gathered multi-tiered skirt. But this one, I don't know, it, it utilizes the fabric so well. So I cut out this blue one. This is a shorter length. So it's just over two yards of fabric. So, I mean, you make a dress out of two yards of fabric. That's pretty good. So yeah, I've got a couple of two yard or two and a quarter yard cuts and some three, three and a half yard cuts. So I was like, oh, I started pulling out fabrics and then I was like, no, no, no. I still got all those ruby dresses that I made in December, end of December, start of January. And um, yeah, so I did the boring thing. Um, so we've got three red, three that need sort of blackish lining, three that need beige, three that need um, pale blue, and three that need plain black lining. So yeah, I got out bits of fabric and um, I cut out all those linings. I tried to stack them in different colors so that you could see all the ones that I cut. But um, yeah, they're all there. So now I just have to sew them up and then sew them into the dresses and then hand stitch them in. So hours of fun there, actually, and a whole weekend worth. But um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. But as well as that, I've started work on the Vogue V9340 coat. And oh my goodness, I mean, making a Chanel style jacket is expensive just because of the time investment and I like to use expensive tweeds. But with this, I'm using just standard fabrics and because of the amount of fabric you use for a big coat, uh, it is, <laughs> it is, sewing is not a cheap hobby. I just, the amount of time and the amount of money you spend on, you know, all the things you have to buy goodness anyway so yeah I'm all I've done at the moment is I cut out all the layers and now I've gone through and I'm pinning all the um darts in the sleeves upper and and under sleeves and all the pleats in the front and back in the, in the body of the coat so yeah it is taking a while I'm hoping I'll finish that this weekend so you should see that on I think it'll be the Tuesday video then after that um I think I guess I'll make this in a, into a video I'll make this one for on camera it's I think it's clearance Christmas stock but it just reminds me of Scotland because they look more like stags than reindeers to me anyway so yeah this is the one I'll be working on then oh god I've still got all those linings to do for the ruby dresses and this other pull-on dress I, th I like the short one in the blue I think that's really cute and because the coat I'm making is navy they're kind of going to go together so yeah there is that so yeah, this is the end of the sewing vlog. <laughs> I've got to go and do loads of work. Oh, and I've still got to film those, um, the December and January collections videos. Goodness me, so much to do. I better go and do some of it now. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. And um, yeah, I hope you've been inspired to chip away at your own sewing projects.